So every year we have many students um, from Belt and Road countries um, to study in China and help them to apply for admission and the many students to get a uh, scholarship. scholarship. Yeah. So Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to African China Connect TV. You know, as I always tell you, uh, our, our mission here in China is to explore the opportunities available that uh, African countries can take lessons from and then uh, our colleagues in Africa who are looking for those opportunities can have made can have ideas about those opportunities available and take advantage of these opportunities. Today we are going to talk about education and the scholarship opportunities available in China that you can take and our conversation today is going to I'm going to have uh, with me uh, one fine gentleman uh, at uh, BRE uh, Overseas Education. So I will allow him to introduce himself and then uh, he tell us something brief about uh, BER Overseas Education and then we proceed with the conversation. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jackson. I'm very happy to on your channel today and thanks for having me. Yeah. So my name is Justin. I'm the co-founder of BRE Overseas Education. So our uh, education consulting company is based in Shanghai. Shanghai. Okay. Yeah, the economic center of China. So uh, we have been doing this business for six years now. So every year we have many students um, from Belt and Road countries um, to study in China and help them to apply for admission and uh, many students to get a uh, scholarship. scholarship. Yeah, so that's why I'm very happy to introduce to you about um, higher education opportunities in China. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Justin. And uh, I believe today's conversation is going, to, is going to be fantastic. So stay tuned as we delve into the opportunities available, especially the, the, the scholarships. I know there are a lot of brilliant students in Africa and the other part of the world that are looking for opportunities to study abroad, but they don't know how to find their way out. So today, Mr. Justin is here to tell you what to do and then where to go. If you need any assistant, his contact number will be put on the screen so that we can contact them directly for consultation and then for assistance to get your scholarship. All right, thank you for uh, coming on board. So uh, can you, can you uh, provide, I mean, an overview of the education structure, I mean, the educational landscape in, the, in, in China for foreign students? Okay, so since we are talking about higher education, right? So yeah. I'm gonna uh, explain to you uh, briefly about uh, what Chinese universities can provide. Okay. You know, so um, so basically there are two categories, which is uh, a degree program and a non-degree program. So for degree program in Chinese university, we have a diploma, and we have a undergraduate, postgraduate, and a PhD. So we have four different type of degree programs. So um, unlike uh, some countries, for example, like French speaking countries, mm -hmm. um, our uh, uh, length of our diploma and undergraduate programs are usually a little bit longer. For example, uh, in some French speaking countries, like their uh, diploma is two years, right? Okay. But in China, the diploma program is usually three years and also uh, for bachelor program. So we have four years program you are most, most of the time. So, but also there are some uh, special program, for example, like clinical medicine, uh, which will be a little bit longer. Maybe it will, it will be up to five years or six years even. Yeah, so, and master degree, usually our program are two to three years. Yeah, so some particular program, for example, like MBA, they might be a little bit shorter, shorter uh, okay. maybe like two years. Two years but most academic programs for masters in China are three years. And uh, I think it will be a little bit longer uh, than some countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for PhD, our program are, are usually four years. Yeah. So that, that's a, a degree program we are talking about. 
So in Chinese universities, there are also many non-degree programs. Mm -hmm. The most uh, common one is a uh, Chinese language program. Wow. Because, yeah, because many students, uh, they want to come maybe uh, learn the language first okay. before they get enrolled into any degree program. Wow. Or they just want to study some Chinese for them maybe to do business with China in the future. Okay. Yeah. So uh, apart from the Chinese language program, the Chinese university will also provide some, uh, you know, special uh, like uh, non-degree training program. For example, uh, like uh, engineering, uh, science, and you know, literature. It depends on what the uh, school is uh, good, the, the good discipline. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. This, 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 is, this is wonderful. I never knew there are bachelor programs, I mean, uh, I mean uh, diploma programs available for foreigners. I thought it was only a bachelor's and master's in the uh, PhD. Yeah. Wow. All programs are open for international students. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. That's wonderful. So now, uh, what, what we would like to know, you talk about bachelor's, you talk about uh, diploma, you spoke about PhD. So I would like to know uh, what are some of the most popular fields of study? I mean, the, the, the subjects that are very, I mean, uh, popular uh -huh. that you recommend mm -hmm. for foreign students who want to study in China. Mm. What are the most popular fields of study? Mm. Okay, so uh, I will say because me personally, I'm also a consultant, so I have received many students like consultation every year. Mm -hmm. So I would say there are, uh, let's say, four parts, four most uh, common, most popular categories. Wow. The first one is uh, science and engineering. Science and yeah, engineering? For, yeah, for example, like uh, uh, civil engineering, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, chemical engineering, uh, electrical engineering you know, these fields are very popular, yeah. And also, the second one is, um, of course, uh, economics and management. I wow. think that is popular all over the world, right? Uh, most students, like, uh, who did, you know, their, uh, for example, the high, school, high school background, if you are, like, a literature, okay. art background, many students will choose economic and management wow. program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the third part is also very popular, which is like uh, medicine related programs. For example, like clinical medicine, like a clinical pharmacy, okay. like uh, nursing, you know, those kind of, uh, or uh, dental surgery, those programs. Yeah. So the last part is like uh, literature. Literature, okay. Yeah. Because uh, um, uh, many students, like I said, right, uh, actually they are interested in learning the language itself. So actually there are many students who come and they will uh, learn uh, like Chinese uh, language and literature. And also uh, we have a, a special program called Teaching Chinese to Speakers of Other Languages. Wow. Uh, that is the major for you uh, if you want to become a Chinese teacher. Yeah, you can study that uh, major. Yeah. So I, th I think it's, it's good because Chinese language is gaining popularity. Uh, if you go to uh, Africa now, we have some universities in Africa. Yes. My country, they actually, where I had my bachelor's, we, they introduced Ch Chinese program. Uh, yeah. So I know because uh, some of our students from Accra, uh, Accra Ghana. Accra, yeah, yeah <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> I know uh, you have uh, like a Confucius Institute. Institute, yeah, the yeah. University of Ghana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I also they know they provide Chinese language and literature program, wow. degree program in uh, University of Ghana. Ghana. Very much. Now, I, I want to know, we would like to know, uh, what are Chinese universities ranking globally in terms of uh, world universities uh, ranking and then performance? We would like to know what are the Chinese universities position? How are they performing against other universities in US, Canada uh, and the rest? Okay, so when it comes to uh, ranking, um, some international students may think that all the top universities uh, are based in the US, the UK and Canada like you said, but actually uh, there are some Chinese universities which is um, among very high ranking in the world. So for example, uh, we have uh, Tsinghua University, mm -hmm. uh, which is like world, uh, ranked world number 16 wow. uh, in last year's, I think, uh, US news, uh, like world university ranking. And also we have some other world-class Chinese university too, like uh, Peking University, Peking. 
Yeah, like in Shanghai, we have Fudan University, Fudan. we have Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the four best Chinese universities. So uh, among top 100, um, you know, uh, like world universities, I think Chinese university, Chinese universities takes like either uh, six to eight positions. Wow. And I think that's a good performance. And it's actually, uh, you know, growing and, you know, climbing uh, year by year. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. That's wonderful. So as far as uh, world universities ranking is concerned, Chinese universities are performing credibly out there. And so you can search it by yourself. So coming to study in China, uh, you are not wasting your time. And in fact, I have been a student and I'm still a student in Chinese uh, Shanghai University and I can attest to that fact. Now, uh, a lot of students in Africa, the, in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. would like to come and study in China because China education is ranking, I mean, is of high quality. Mm -hmm. But some of them are looking for opportunities. Now we're going to talk about uh, scholarship opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the scholarship opportunities available mm -hmm. for uh, foreign students who would like to come and study in China? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think um, uh, scholarship is yeah. one of the like um, advantage for choosing China as your study abroad destination wow. because um, not only that we have many scholarships. Uh, available, but also our school fees are relatively lower compared with uh, Western countries. So uh, it will be a you know a financial let's say is like a relief for many international students. So uh, talking about uh, scholarship, we actually have many um, different kind of uh, programs from uh, central government to local government to university themselves. There will always be a different kind of uh, program for international students to choose. For example, uh, we have a very uh, uh, popular uh, scholarship and which is also a very good scholarship from Chinese government. It's called Chinese government scholarship. We call it CSC scholarship. CSC. Okay. So in CSC, um, uh, it will be uh, available for both a uh, bachelor, uh, master, and a PhD program, and uh, you no need you don't need to pay a tuition fee, uh, no need to pay accommodation fee, no need to pay insurance fee, and plus you will also get uh, some monthly stipend uh, from Chinese government. So I think it's um, ranging from two thousand five hundred RMB to 3,500 RMB wow, per month. Wow, yeah. wow, that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So uh, the scholarships available, we have the Chinese government scholarship, which is a CSC scholarship. Yes. Uh, and then you have the local government, right? Yeah, like some province, provincial government provincial or some government. Uh, municipal city government. Okay. They will also set up different kinds of scholarships to attract more international students. Into their respective cities. Yes. So in Shanghai, we have uh, Shanghai, Shanghai government scholarship. Shanghai government scholarship. Yeah. That they offer to students who want to come and study in China. Yes, I mean, Shanghai. study in Shanghai. Yes. Uh, okay, so if you are applying for university in Shanghai, uh, the scholarship opportunities are, are available. You can try Chinese government scholarship as well as Shanghai government scholarship. How about the universities? Is there any, like, we have a university scholarships for students, yes. specific universities? Yeah, let's say uh, uh, there are uh, many uh, university scholarships provided by um, universities themselves. I would say most universities they provide some kind of uh, you know scholarships like uh, more or less uh, like for example your university mm -hmm. like uh, Shanghai, Shanghai University mm -hmm. I know they also have university scholarship available mm -hmm. and it's also uh, pretty good so um, um, usually the university scholarships coverage are a little bit like less you know than those government types yeah but also uh, the percent coverage percentage like more students will be covered with like university scholarship than mm -hmm. government scholarships wow yeah. wow 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 thank you so much justin thank you so much Mr. justin this is uh, so much um, um educative enlightenment and so and so forth now um, i would like you to tell us talk about these scholarships what are the eligibility criteria mm -hmm. for these scholarships? Talk about CSC, mm -hmm. provincial government scholarships, mm -hmm. and universities. Mm -hmm. We want to know 
the 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 eligibility criteria mm -hmm. yeah. okay so talking about uh, eligibilities right there are some common like requirements mm -hmm. for example the first one is age like uh, if you want to apply for uh, for example a uh, bachelor program bachelor, okay. uh, some university have uh, the restriction of 25 years old some have 28 years old yeah Be below, below 25 yeah below 25 28 okay. like for master program uh, usually the uh, like age limit is like 30 or 35 also depend on the university. university yeah okay. and for phd is usually a uh, uh, age limit is usually 40 or 45 yeah. Wow. Yeah, so okay. that's the age part. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. This is wonderful. So secondly, uh, it's about uh, the um, criminal record okay. background and also uh, medical situation. So you cannot have any uh, you know, criminal record before and also uh, you need to be like uh, physically healthy. Uh, because it will be required to provide uh, these two documents um, before your application. Yeah. Wow. So thirdly, uh, let's say the, also the most important part for you to get admission and especially scholarship is your academic performance. performance wow. Yeah. So, um, like, uh, um, you need to uh, be, do good. Perform <laughs> you know, well. Perform yeah. well uh, yeah. during yeah. your previous uh, yeah. like, uh, studies, especially like uh, the highest degree. For example, if you apply for bachelor then um, your high school grades matters. Maybe your junior, junior high doesn't matter <laughs> much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so especially if you want to get into a good ranking university mm -hmm. with good scholarship, mm -hmm. so you uh, need to have good academic situation. Yeah. Okay, wow, wow, wow. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Justin. Now, remember, uh, he is the co-founder of uh, BER. B R E, sorry, B R E, Overseas Education. They are a consultant here in China, uh, authorized by the Chinese government to give uh, education and then guide students who want to apply for uh, to apply for schools in China and also apply for scholarship in China. So his number is on the screen. Uh, if you want to apply, if you need a scholarship to study in China. Kindly pick that number on WhatsApp, send him or send them WhatsApp message and then uh, they will tell you the requirement and what you need to do to be able to get a scholarship to study in China. Now, let's, let's uh, talk about uh, application process, yeah, which is very important. Some people would like to know. Uh, what is the general, I mean, the general timeline for foreign, foreign students who want to study in China to apply for universities in China? Mm. The general timeline, the timeline, okay. I mean, the deadlines for foreign students study, foreign students apply to universities in China. Mm. Okay, so once you have decided to study abroad, I think uh, it would be better for you to prepare as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So here are some important deadlines. So in Chinese universities, we usually have uh, two intakes, which is mm -hmm. uh, March intake, March. which we also call spring intake. Pre and okay. also we have September intake, which we call autumn intake. Autumn, yeah. okay. So not all schools have March intake, yeah, but all schools mm -hmm. have autumn intake, uh, September intake. Okay. So, and also September intake is the time where uh, most, let's say, government type of scholarships are available for. So for March intake, like I said, uh, some universities don't open. Those universities that open, they, maybe they will only have like university scholarship available mm -hmm. for students. But for September, all schools and all scholarship programs will open. Yeah, for example, right now, uh, when at this moment, we are at uh, October, right? October, so yeah, if you yeah, want to, uh, yeah, October, yeah, yeah. So you can, you can either choose 2025 March intake or 2025 September intake. Okay. Uh, even if you choose September intake, it is also okay for you to uh, start preparation now. Okay, because like you said, the procedure, right? Uh, we need to help you to select 
some universities that are suitable for you with good success rate and then we need to help you to prepare all documents mm -hmm. um, well you know to a better you know University. condition yeah and then we need to help you to apply submit your information and documents to university system right. and uh, uh, when you get the uh, approved right we will also need to apply for visa documents for you wow. yeah and visa application also takes time wow. so um, let's say, but the important deadlines, I'll come back to the topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the March intake, is, the deadline is usually around January. January? Yeah, uh -huh. maybe a middle of January. Mm. Yeah. And also for September intake, uh, the deadline is usually around uh, like uh, May to like June. Yeah. Mm. But I would like to give you another um, uh, reminder, important reminder. Like June is the general deadline, right? But it's not the deadline for all university and all like scholarship, scholarship programs. programs. Let's say if you want to apply for Chinese government scholarship, the deadline is March. March, okay. Yeah. So generally. that means yeah, generally. Generally, okay. that means you need to apply at least half year in advance. Mm. Uh, so, like I said, if you want a good university, a good scholarship, it's never too early to start. Okay. Mm. Wow, 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 wonderful. I believe uh, our viewers or the followers of Afri Channel Connect TV uh, by September, we will have a lot of them coming to study in China here through oh. B -E, uh, BRE, Overseas Education. Yeah, we would yeah. love to help them to get their idea universities in China. Wow, 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 wonderful. So now, uh, you know, China, the official language spoken across the entire country is uh, Mandarin, which is the Chinese language. Yeah. And so somebody applying from uh, Ghana, someone applying from Nigeria, applying from Kenya, uh, I would like to know, are there any language proficiency requirements for international students? If so, which tests are accepted? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, okay. So in China, we also have like a uh, English teaching program. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let, uh, okay. Let's talk about Chinese teaching. If you want to apply for Chinese teaching, of course, you need to study Chinese and get Chinese proficiency certificate, mm -hmm. which is called HSK certificate. HSK. Yeah, that is mandatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it has different level, you know, of like certificates that is required for different level of like degree. So so if you want if someone want to study in Chinese, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So like if you want bachelor, uh, your uh, minimum requirement is HSK 4. HSK yeah, four. if it's master it's 5 and if it's PhD it's 6. Wow. Yeah, if you teaching language is Chinese. Wow. Mm. Uh, so if if uh, the program you are applying the language of instruction is in Chinese. Master's is HSK five. five, and then bachelor's is HSK four, right? Yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. the, I'm talking about the general, generally, uh, like okay. requirements. Yeah, all right. But then if you are, t like I said, mm -hmm. if you are from uh, maybe Ghana, Kenya, uh, Nigeria. Tanzania, Nigeria, mm -hmm. your English is your uh, like official language. language yeah. You might want to study in English directly. Mm -hmm. So most the Chinese universities they also provide English teaching programs. Programs, okay. yeah. So there will be uh, English language requirements, of course. So let's say if you are from um, uh, these uh, you know English speaking countries, Country, yeah. like uh, from Africa, let's say in yeah. general, mm -hmm. uh, most of the time uh, you don't need to provide an extra uh, document for let's say um, English 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 proficiency because like TOEFL, like TOEFL and mm -hmm. IELTS for Chinese, we need to get those you know to study in you know Western countries right mm -hmm. but like you just need to provide a, a document that can prove your previous study was delivered in English yes. language wow. and it will be enough uh, you know as the language proficiency wow. certificate wow. Mm. Wow. so it's wow. much easier <laughs> so so what about those who whose country are not uh, uh, English, teach, English, English, speaking. English speaking countries. Yeah, like uh, many uh, French speaking countries yeah, in Africa, like, like uh, Ivory Coast, Coast, like Congo. Congo. Then it will be required for them to provide English certificate. Wow! Mm. Wow! Mm. Wow! 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 Hi, this is I am I'm, I am flabbergasted. Let me use that word, and I'm so excited that we are getting this educative and uh, so so brief 
Wow! So if you are from English speaking country like Ghana, uh, Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and others, I mean in Africa and then other continent, other parts of the world, you don't need to write TEFL, you don't need to write uh, I E L T S or whatever. All you need to do is get a document that, pro that proves that your previous studies was conducted in English and the Chinese university will accept you to study. This is excellent. Now, get closer to your screens and let's continue. Now, let, 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 let's talk about uh, admission requirements. Yeah, um, uh, I would like to know, what are the common admission requirements for undergraduates and then graduate programs in, uh, in, in Chinese universities okay. generally? Okay, so in our previous question, we have talked about eligibilities. Mm -hmm. So this part, uh, I'm going to talk about briefly about maybe the documents, yeah, right? Yeah, We're yeah, talking yeah. about the documents required. So <clears throat> we have some uh, um, general documents required for studying in China. For example, we need an international passport. Yeah, your passport. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we need uh, like your personal uh, passport size feed photo. Mm -hmm. And we need your highest degree certificate. Mm -hmm. And also we need a transcript from your highest degree. Mm -hmm. Then we need a medical report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we need a police report. Police report, yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, some universities, they will also require other extra documents. For example, uh, they might require a study plan. If it's like master and PhD, right? Yeah. It, it will be a research plan. Research yeah. plan. Yeah, for okay. a bachelor and up below, it's like a study plan. Study for plan. master and above, it's a research plan. Research yeah. plan. Okay. Uh, or maybe some universities will also ask you to provide bank statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some might ask you to provide a, a resume, a CV. A CV, okay. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I think that's it for the for the for the for the requirements. The requirement. Wow, so simple, just like that. Yeah, it's not wow. very difficult actually. Mm -hmm. Also, if you are, uh, apply with us, our consultant will help you to provide, uh, prepare all documents one by one and improve them and to the best possible you know uh, condition to be submitted. Yeah, mm -hmm. because some students they think this is okay, but it's not okay. Some students can can use good you know scan machine to scan their documents well which is not welcomed by the universities <laughs> yeah. uh, okay so meaning if you if you if you are choosing b b r e uh, overseas education consult i mean to do your for them to help you do your application i would say we will try our best yeah and also i can share with you like our um, um uh, let's say data Okay, so we have like around 90% of our students uh, that will uh, success, you so know, so to get get in, yeah. admission. So 100, we cannot guarantee. <laughs> but 90% is enough, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about 100% is uh, uh, some students, they don't know how to go about it. So when they submit their document, you review the documents and then put it in good shape before you apply mm -hmm. so, so yeah to help them get admission yeah right? so for us we are not like you know some uh, scamming <laughs> agency mm -hmm. to take your documents take your money and then they don't do nothing like if your situation for example it is too bad mm -hmm. we might tell you your success rate is very low mm -hmm. you get to decide whether you want to go through the process or not wow. yeah wow. we'll be honest with you now um before you go, before we, 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 we draw curtains to this conversation, I would like to know how can uh, international students, I mean, leverage on their education in China when seeking for job back home or in China here? Mm. Like uh, you mean, like uh, how is uh, studying China experience can be beneficial yeah. to their career in, in, in the future. Yeah, career. Okay. In, in their career in China and then in their home countries too. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm sure when, uh, as long as you choose to study abroad, mm -hmm. right, uh, that country maybe have uh, some like, uh, let's say, benefits or some like uh, more advanced aspects that your country doesn't have. So in any country you go, you're expecting those kind of experience or technology or information or something like that, right? Yeah. So I'm sure um, in China, the stuff that I can um, 
we can provide you is that uh, we we have a good uh, economy, so there will be yeah. more like uh, career opportunities. Oh, yeah, there are many cross country com uh, companies like in here. Uh, where they can provide you different like positions all over the world and also uh, another thing is that uh, since you know um, uh, let's say Africa and China we are like uh, good buddies like yeah, we are doing yeah. good trading business with each other yeah. right so that's why many international students they are actually seeking uh, you know business opportunities by themselves which is like they start up their business in China or in their own country after they uh, finish their study and then they do international trade. Wow. Like there are so many commodities in China <laughs> that, you know, they're popular overseas like clothing, you know, mm. like uh, uh, machine cars, yeah. like new energy cars, mm -hmm. electrical cars. Electric cars, yeah. Yeah, many wigs, you know. The hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are lots and I can I can attest to that, you know. Uh, yeah. there are lots of opportunities in China. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Chinese universities they, 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 they don't teach you the theory, only the theory, they teach you theory and practicals mm. so that you be equipped mm -hmm. to be able to fit into the job market after your education mm. that's what i see yeah and also uh, like we have discussed there are many uh, chinese like, invested like um projects mm -hmm. in many african countries like mm -hmm. for example chinese government is helping uh, some countries to build railway you know to, uh, you know something like that yeah a uh, high speed train Trip, something yeah like something like that and then there are many chinese uh, earned owned uh, enterprises uh, that have their branch there. So if you can master uh, a Chinese language and if you have a degree, uh, maybe related degree to those fields, I'm sure it will be easier uh, to have you know job opportunities in Chinese universities in uh, sorry in Chinese companies in your country. Mm, yeah. Wow, wow, wow! This is wonderful. This is wonderful. So now, uh, before you go, uh, I would like you to say something to our viewers. Mm -hmm. And then you add your contact details to viewers who would like to come and who would like to consult you okay. and seek assistance for applications and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would like to thank again to uh, uh, Free China. Afro China channel to have me today, and we have a wonderful uh, conversation, conversation yeah. together. And uh, well, I'm very glad to meet you personally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and because you are uh, like an international student representative and I'm very glad that you are uh, spreading uh, like uh, more information yeah. to more uh, students, more people who are not in China and tell people like how is it really is in, in here. And um, so I would like to uh, welcome you all to have the opportunity to give it a shot to apply for universities in here. So I'm sure the life the education you know the opportunities like here won't uh, let you down so i hope to see you all one day in china particularly uh, in shanghai <laughs> if you are in yeah. shanghai uh, maybe i can see you one day yeah thank, thank you. you all right your contact details so that they would like to what's up what's up thank yeah you. you can reach out to me uh, through whatsapp or if you have wechat i don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can also have my wechat and we have a uh, instagram page and instagram. Uh, facebook page where you can also reach out to us you can search bre overseas education you will find us on uh, instagram and wechat okay. uh, instagram and facebook all mm. right thank you so much thank you thank you so thank much you. for coming and uh okay ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe if you are yet to subscribe to our channel subscribe and share the information with your colleagues your friends and family members your schoolmates and all that like i said uh, afri china connect tv our mission here in china is to explore the opportunities available opportunities that are being uh, offered by the chinese government and the chinese people generally so that uh, our dear brothers and sisters in africa can take advantage of those opportunities and then also the good things that uh, china is doing that is uh, that is leading to the development of china to become the second biggest economy in the world so that uh, our 
countries in Africa can take lessons from.